Hello and welcome to the video. This is Matthew and we're going to look at question 10, which is a 50 mark question on trigonometry, functions and a small bit on the circle as well. So part A of the question tells us that James visits a giant Ferris wheel. He enters a capsule on the wheel from a platform that's above the ground. The wheel is rotating anti-clockwise and the capsule is attached to the Ferris wheel at point P. So the height of P above the ground H is modelled by the function H of T equal to 65 minus 55 cos pi T over 15. So T is the time in minutes after he enters the capsule and then H is measured in metres. So James exits the capsule after one complete rotation of the Ferris wheel. So now A part 1 is worth 5 marks and it wants us to work out the height of P above the ground after 3 minutes. So basically this is when T is equal to 3. So we're given the function for H T but when T is 3 we're just going to work out the function H of 3 and see what that is. So that's 65 minus 55 cos pi by 3 over 15. So let's see what that is now on our calculator. So 65 minus 55 cos and then pi by 3 is just 3 pi over 15 so that's equal to 20.5040653 and correct to one decimal place that's 20.5 meters so h of 3 is equal to 20.5 meters so that's our answer for a part 1 and now we're going to work out a part 2 which is also worth 5 marks so here we have to find the lowest and the highest heights of p above the ground this is tricky enough but the important thing to notice is that the variable is in the cause part of the question so the 65 and the 55 have no t's, they're constants, but the cos part of the question is the variable. So it's pi t, as I said, and obviously t being the variable. So cos of any angle will always be between minus 1 and 1. It can be minus 1 and 1, however, it cannot be smaller than minus 1 and it cannot be greater than 1. So if cos of any angle is between minus 1 and 1 or equal to minus 1 and 1, then cos pi t over 15 must also be between minus 1 and 1 or equal to minus 1 and 1. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put cos pi t over 15 equal to 1, put it into the function and see what we get, then put cos pi t over 15 equal to minus 1 and put that into the function and then see what we get and obviously the greater value will be the maximum height and the smaller value will be the lowest height. So when cos pi t over 15 is equal to 1, we get 65 minus 55 times by 1, so that's going to give us 10 meters and now we have to work out the value of the function when cos pi t over 15 is equal to minus 1, so then we get 65 minus 55 times by minus 1. One. So obviously minus 55 but minus 1 is plus 55 so that's 65 plus 55 and 65 plus 55 is 120 meters. So therefore the lowest height is 10 meters above the ground and then the highest height is 120 meters above the ground. There are answers for A part 2 and now we're going to have a look at A part 3. So now we're going to find how long it takes the capsule to do one full rotation and this part of the question is worth 5 marks as well. So we know that the highest the capsule goes is 120 meters. So if we work out how long it takes the capsule to go to 120 meters, we can times that by 2 as obviously how far it goes up it must also come down the same distance so that will give us then how long it takes the capsule to do one full rotation so its maximum height then is when cos pi t over 15 is equal to minus 1 so now we're going to solve for t so we're going to get pi t over 15 is equal to cos inverse of minus 1 so cos inverse of minus 1 is equal to pi so that's pi t over 15 is equal to pi so now I'm going to multiply both sides by 15 to get rid of the fraction. So then on the left hand side the 15 will cancel with the 15. And then on the right hand side we get 15 pi. So it's pi t is equal to 15 pi. Both of the pi's will cancel. So we get t is equal to 15. So therefore t is equal to 15. But remember that's how long it takes the capsule to go to its maximum height. However it must come back down again. So therefore we're going to multiply 15 by 2. And 15 by 2 is obviously 30. So it takes 30 minutes for a full rotation. So that's your answer for A part 3. And now we're going to have a look at A part 4. So this part of the question is worth 5 marks as well. And it says, using your answers to parts 1 to 3 or otherwise, sketch the graph of the function h of t for one full rotation of the Ferris wheel. So we know that it starts off at 10. So we can start off here. And we know its maximum height is going to be 120 after 15 minutes. And then we also know that after 30 minutes, it's going to go back down to 10 meters. So your graph should look something like this. So that's your answer for A part 4 of the question. Remember, some graphs might look slightly different, but it should be similar enough to that. So now we're going to move on to part B of the question. So part B tells us that the path of the capsule P can be described by a circle as shown in the diagram where the point O is the origin, 0, 0, and then C is the centre of the Ferris wheel. So then B part 1 is worth 5 marks, and it wants us to show that the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared minus 130y plus 1200 equal to 0. So let's have a look on page 19 of our formula tables book for the formula for the equation of a circle. So it's this formula right here. So we need to find the centre and radius of our circle, the Ferris wheel. So the centre is point C, so let's try and work out the centre. So we know that the distance 
between the origin and the top of the circle up here is 120 and we know that the distance between the ground and the first wheel is 10 which means that the diameter of the circle is 110 meters so half of that will be 55 so therefore our radius is 55 meters now if we work out how far c is above the origin we're able to work out the center as we know the x value will be zero so we know that the radius is 55 and we also know that the first wheel is 10 meters above the ground so therefore c is 65 above o so therefore the center is going to be 0 65. so now we can pop this into our equation so remember or is going to be 55 h is 0 and k is 65. so x minus h so x minus 0 squared plus y minus k squared so y minus 65 squared and that's equal to r squared so that's equal to 55 squared so now we just have to multiply this out so x minus 0 squared is just x squared and then y minus 65 squared is going to be y squared plus 2 times y by minus 65 so minus 130 y and then minus 65 squared which is plus 4225 and that's equal to 55 squared which is equal to 3025 so now minusing 3025 on both sides to get zero on the right hand side and we get x squared plus y squared minus 130y plus 1200 is equal to zero which is exactly what we have to show and that's our answer for B part 1. So now let's have a look at B part 2, which is worth 10 marks. So as the first wheel rotates, a stationary boat at B first becomes visible at point P1. So then B is 500 meters horizontally from the vertical axis through the center C of the first wheel and the angle CBO is equal to theta as shown below. So here we have to find theta in degrees correct to two decimal places. So we have a right angle triangle, the triangle COB. This is a right angle down here. We know that the line OB is equal to 500 meters. We also know that OC is equal to 65 meters. So now we can use our trigonometric ratios to work out the measure of the angle theta. So remember the side across from the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse which I'm going to label as H. The side across from the angle is the opposite so O and then the third side is the adjacent so in this case the 500 is going to be the adjacent A. So here we have the adjacent and the opposite so remember our trigonometric ratios are sine cos and tan and when you have the opposite and the adjacent that's tan which is equal to so tan theta is equal to O over A. So in our case here it's going to be tan theta is equal to 65 over 500 and then we're going to solve for theta to find the measure of the angle. So we're going to say that theta is equal to tan inverse of 65 over 500. So let's use your calculator to see what this is. So make sure that your calculator is in degrees and you can do tan inverse of 65 over 500. And then you get 7.4069121288 correct to two decimal places that's 7.41 degrees so therefore the measure of the angle theta is 7.41 degrees and that's our answer for b part two we can now have a look at b part three which is also worth 10 marks so we're told that as the ferris wheel continues to rotate the boat at b is no longer visible from the point p2 onwards the line through b and p2 is tangent to the path of p where the angle ob p2 is equal to alpha so we're told that the x-coordinate of the point P2 is 13 and we're asked to find its y-coordinate and then hence from that we have to find alpha in degrees. So we know that the point P2 is going to be equal to 13 and then some value for y. Now we know that P2 is on the circle so if we put 13 and y into the equation of the circle we should be able to solve for y and then this will give us the y value so let's do that. So we worked out the equation of the circle in B part 1. So it was x squared plus y squared minus 130y plus 1200 is equal to 0. So now I'm going to put 13 in for x and obviously y is just going to stay as y. So it's 13 squared plus y squared minus 130y plus 1200 is equal to 0. So you can add the 169 to 1200 and that will give you y squared minus 130y plus 1369 is equal to 0. So now we have to solve for y and I'm going to use the minus b formula here to solve for y. So the minus b formula is in the formula tables book but just in case you don't know it it's minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. a is the coefficient of the y squared so in this case it's going to be 1 b is the coefficient of y so in this case minus 130 and then c is the constant so 1369 so let's pop those into the formula now so it's going to be minus minus 130 plus minus the square root of minus 130 squared minus 4 by 1 by 1369 over 2 by 1 so that's going to be 130 plus minus the square root of 16,900 minus 5,476 divided by 2. So that gives us 130 plus minus the square root of 11,424 over 2. So the square root of 11,424 is going to be 4 square root of 714. So basically we have 130 plus 4 square root of 714 divided by 2 and 130 minus 4 square root of 714 divided by 2. 
So then 130 plus 4 square root of 714 over 2 is going to give us 118.44 correct to two decimal places. And then 130 minus 4 square root of 714 over 2 is going to give us 11.56 correct to two decimal places. However, it cannot be equal to 11.56 meters as it's obviously too small. We know it has to be above 65. So therefore, y is not equal to 11.56. Y must be equal to 118.44 meters. So now we can use this now to work out the measure of the angle alpha between O, B and P2. So we're going to draw in another right angle triangle and we now know that the length of that pink line there is 118.44 and we know that the length between O and then the pink line there where it hits the x-axis is going to be 13 as the x-coordinate of P2 is 13. So therefore the base of the triangle then, so the distance between B and where the vertical pink line hits the x-axis is going to be 500 minus 13, so in other words 487 meters. So now we have our right angled triangle with the right angle here and once again the side across from the 90 degrees is going to be the hypotenuse. The side opposite the angle will be O, so in in this case 118.44 is the opposite O and then 487 must be the adjacent. So once again we have O and A so remember tan theta is equal to O over A. So let's do tan alpha equal to 118.44 over 487 and then solve for alpha to work out the measure of the angle. So that's now going to be alpha is equal to tan inverse of 118.44 over 487. So let's use our calculator now to work out what that is. So tan inverse of 118.44 over 487 and that's equal to 13.6691455559 correct to two decimal places that's 13.67 degrees so alpha is equal to 13.67 degrees and that's the answer for b part three of the question and now we're going to move on to the final part of the question b part four this is worth five marks so this is hence or otherwise find the length of time to the nearest minute during which the boat at b is visible let's go up to our diagram now and let's mark in from what point to what point will the boat be visible at? So I'm going to connect B to C so that I can mark in P1 again. So that means that this point here is P1. So there's P1. And we know that the boat is visible from P1 to P2. So I'm going to label this angle here between P1 and P2 as theta. And if we work that out, then we can work out how long the boat is visible for. I'm going to label this angle down here as angle P. And angle P will be equal to the angle alpha minus theta. I've already worked out the angles alpha and theta in parts 3 and parts 2. So I can do 13.67 minus 7.41. And that will give me the angle P. So therefore the angle P is 6.26 degrees. So now we have our triangle P2, C and B. We know that there's 90 degrees up here. Which means that 180 minus 90 minus 6.62 will give us the angle theta. So let's work that out. So therefore theta is equal to 83.74 degrees. So this is the tricky bit. Even though we have the degrees, we now have to see how long in time it will take for the boat to be visible. So we know that a full rotation is 360 degrees and that's 30 minutes. So now I'm going to divide both sides by 360 to find out how many degrees per minute that is. So then I get 1 degree is every 0.08333333 minutes. So now I'm going to multiply 0.08333333 by 83.74. And that will give me 6.9783333, which correct to the nearest minute is 7 minutes. So the boat at B is visible for a total of 7 minutes. So that's our answer for B part 4, the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.